Guys, it's the question that every photographer ends up asking themselves right after they commit to getting a new camera. What now? All right, so through this video, we're gonna dig into that question because here's the honest answer, is whether you are renting a Fujifilm GFX system for the first time or you just bought, the lens lineup is remarkable and it's kind of hard to go wrong. But that said, there are three lenses that I think are the first buys, the must buys for every photographer, especially portrait and wedding photographers that are trying to venture into this uh, world of large format digital. And so we're gonna start this video by talking about the Fujifilm GF 63 millimeter but hey, first things first, let me give all the disclaimers, okay? So y'all, my name is Miles Wood Boyer, and if you Google my name or you look around much, you're gonna find out that yes, I am formally endorsed by Fujifilm, and yes, I'm a global ambassador, I'm a part of their ex-photographer team, but y'all, let me be really clear about something. Fujifilm did not pay me, nor did they ask me to make these videos, and in fact, these opinions are all mine. These aren't the newest lenses, these aren't the flashiest lenses, and, uh, and so I want you guys to understand that there is a severe level of authenticity coming through this video, and I really think that you can trust the opinions here because I have used these lenses almost exclusively in my photography career for the last several years. So in subsequent videos, in the next few videos, we're gonna talk through both the Fujifilm GF 110 that I have mounted here on my GFX 100. And uh, this thing is just an absolute portrait beast. It's a monster. I can't wait to dig into the things that we create with that lens, as well as the Fujifilm GF 45 millimeter F 2.8. I have it here on the GFX uh, 50R. It's a great street lens. It's also just a really cool moment lens for, uh, for wedding photographers. It gets used a lot in my equipment and in my gear bag. In fact, if I'm only gonna carry two lenses with me, typically it is that 45 and my favorite. And that's what we're gonna dig into today. We're gonna go in to what I have mounted here on the GFX 100S which is the GF 63 millimeter 2.8. Guys, this is the, uh, the, the 50 millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera. Um, the lens that gives the most uh, compositional uh, creativity, in my opinion, it also has the snappiest autofocus. We're gonna dive in here to all the things that I really love about this lens. But hey, let me be clear first. Let me, let me kind of back up just a little bit. I just released a video a few days ago about why I love the GFX 100 and 100S so much, but I should probably be clear for those of you guys that may not have an understanding as to what these cameras are and why they're so different. So let me give you a just quick rundown. The rest of the camera industry right now is fighting over something that's really silly frames per second. Everybody's arguing about autofocus and frames per second. And don't get me wrong, having a really snappy and very reliable autofocus is a beautiful thing. But I want to challenge you guys listening to this, that at some point, things get so fast, calculators get so fast, that the art gets sort of stripped away. And what you end up with is a camera that thinks faster than you do, it composes faster than you do, and it shoots faster than you are in control. These Fujifilm GFX systems are not that camera. Okay, they're a little slower. Uh, still at five frames per second, I think it's very reliable and very quick. And the autofocus is actually the fastest autofocus system ever put into a medium or large format digital camera system. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty tech advanced. But it's not gonna be as snappy as what has come out over the last year uh, from the other three main manufacturers. And so the big question comes down to why. Why is it that a few of the leading wedding and portrait photographers in the world are choosing to shoot a slower camera system? The answer is clearly image quality as well as just user experience. These cameras love to be shot. They were designed by photographers for photographers with the best color science on the market. They've got incredible fall off and at over 102 megapixels, these things can do almost anything in post. The answer to this camera question is going to be the GFX system for me for a long, long time to come. All right, so this video, however, is supposed to be, we're supposed to be talking about lenses. And so let's get there, okay? I mentioned that the, uh, the first video, this video is going to be talking about this 63 millimeter F2.8. And I think it's really clear to point out first things first. This lens is one of the oldest lenses on the lineup. In fact, actually that 50 millimeter lens is what most camera manufacturers kind of have to start with, right? It's the most sought after. 
And there's a reason for that. The reason is because that 50 millimeter perspective is such a traditionally safe way to shoot. But let me kind of challenge you here. If you get more compositionally creative with a lens that's this reliable, you always know what you're gonna get out of it. So as I start to flash images up uh, on the screen here that were shot with this lens, I want you to think through just for a second whether or not you are being as creative as you possibly can with the gear kit that you already have. If you're considering jumping into the Fujifilm system, I hope that you'll actually start with this lens. And there's a few reasons why. Okay, first things first, autofocus speed. This is, to my knowledge, the fastest autofocusing camera, uh, sorry, lens for this camera system. In fact, I actually love, love to hold, have this lens on my camera on the bride's way down the aisle and the bridesmaid's way down the aisle. It track focuses beautifully. It's quick. It allows plenty of light in. Hey, disclaimer really quick. A lot of people will say, and if you Google this, you're going to get this a lot. There is a lot of misunderstanding about this F 2.8 concept. Okay. So when you, when you translate a lens system from 63 millimeters and you convert it down into a full frame concept and you convert it to a 50 millimeter equivalent, right? You have to do the same thing for the aperture. So it's an f2.8, but you have to understand that this thing actually shoots more like an f2 in practicality as far as the amount of light that it's letting in. The reality here is that numbers are just numbers, and until you've shot this thing, you don't really understand. But the high ISO floor on these cameras is good enough that at 2.8, you get incredible fall off, you've got great light quality, and you can shoot this thing all day and all night long. So what is it that I love so much about it besides the autofocus? Well, the compositional creativity with a medium format sensor, having this scale, this ratio of sensor, instead of the two by three, having the four by three sensor allows you to have this remarkable field of view through this 50 millimeter equivalent. The compositional ability with no warping and no edge fall off is incredible. And in fact, one of the things that I love most about these Fujifilm cameras and lenses is that though they are technically perfectly made, they aren't too perfect. Now, if you've been a photographer for a while, you probably know what I'm saying here. There's something that's really frustrating about picking up a piece of glass that changes your camera from what you're actually seeing into an almost HDR animated version of it. Sometimes lenses are so crystal clear and so tack sharp that they lack character and this lens doesn't have that at all. In fact, there's no flaws. There's no soft spots. I've shot about five or six different versions of this lens, and I've never had any part of the lens that seemed flawed, but there's always character to it. The way the light enters it, the way that it bounces around inside the barrel before it hits the sensor, and then the way that it's interpreted by the sensor itself, it always allows for a level of creativity that I can't find out of either uh, other, the other lenses that we're gonna be talking about or any other camera lens on the market. So the GF 63 millimeter 2.8 is my go-to. Now, again, I'm gonna answer questions on here as well as in my DMs, and I'm assuming that a lot of you guys are gonna to wanna to know how it equates to the newer lenses in the lineup, predominantly maybe the 80 millimeter uh, F1.7, which is also a phenomenal uh, lens, and, and I'm sure a few of the other lenses as well. And let me just be really clear, it's pretty hard to go wrong, but this particular lens is my very favorite. Okay, so the color quality out of it is remarkable. You can see that I'm a huge believer in very cinematic color tones, and this camera lens gives me uh, probably the most flexibility in range and tones uh, through the camera. And it's a little odd to say that. I think often we we just assume that we're slapping a piece of glass in front of our sensor, and the color is the color. But if you've ever used an off-brand lens, a third-party lens, or just a crappy lens, you know that the kind of glass and the quality of the glass that the light is going through can drastically change everything about the way the sensor absorbs that light and color. And this camera lens just doesn't struggle with that. So it's the place to start. I mentioned that in future videos, we're gonna talk through that 110 and how I use it for portrait work. It definitely has the best bokeh, it has the best fall off, but I'm really hesitant to use that as my first and favorite lens, and here's the reason why. From a traditional por portrait perspective, it is a perfectly gorgeous and almost flawless lens. 
But sometimes I feel like photographers hide behind bokeh as an opportunity to look professional instead of shoot professional. We'll get into that more. That 45 also is just a remarkable lens. And hey guys, if you haven't drank the Fujifilm Kool-Aid yet, I've got a challenge for you. Jump onto lensrental.com or really any rental company and rent this GFX 100 or 100S for a few days. But if you're not quite there yet, if you just want something to kind of throw in your bag and get the feel for what Fujifilm feels like, this little camera right here, this is the uh, Fujifilm X100V. It's the, it's the entry point. It's the door in to the Fujifilm color system. It's the place that I recommend to all photographers that reach out to me that say, why Fujifilm? I always say, hey, just go pick up an X100V and carry it around for a few days. I don't think I've ever heard anybody come back to me and say that they didn't fall in love with it. If you're struggling a little bit from your photography perspective with finding inspiration or finding your voice, finding your style, if you're having a hard time differentiating yourself from the market around you, or if you're just trying to figure out where you're headed in your career, I'll challenge you guys. I think that there's something to be said about not hiding behind your gear, but being very intentional about the gear that you purchase and the reason why you're utilizing it. Check out one of these lenses. And then of course, guys, let me know what you think.